Welcome back. This is our recap of week two for ADM J121, Introduction to Corrections. Uh, Professor Bowen, again, you guys are doing an amazing job. Just wanted to uh, clarify a few things. First off, we'll start with the quiz. And this comes up every time, and I apologize for not putting it in the first video. Uh, the computer doesn't understand misspellings. It doesn't understand if you add more to it. When we do the short answers, it's looking for exactly what's in the answer key. And I try to come up with all the different uh, possible answers, but I just can't. Um, but what I do is at the end of the quiz, when it closes, I go through and I manually grade. If you have something close or you have the right idea, I'll give you credit for it. One of the ones that got everybody was the pillory. Um, I said, what, what punishment is depicted here? And it was actually a pillory. Uh, there is a difference between pillory and stocks. So if you said stocks, I didn't give you credit, but if you said any version of pillory, pillories, uh, gave an explanation of the pillory, then I went ahead and gave you credit for it. So that'll probably come up in the next few quizzes and the midterm and the final. Well, there will be questions that you put in and it'll tell you they're wrong. Um, just know that I will go back and manually grade it at the end, uh, but I encourage you still to, to send me an email and say, hey, I think I got this right. Um, most importantly though, once the uh, quiz closes, if you still haven't received credit for that, please email me right away. I want to make sure that you guys are getting full credit for your work. Um, Alright, so I'm still seeing, we were talking about probation. The idea was that we had a probationer um, who uh, had some issues with drugs, theft, who was kind of escalating uh, in that idea of larceny and was, was moving on to higher crimes. Um, and the first eight months, which I think was key, the first eight months of his probation sentence, everything was going fine and then all of a sudden we had a decline and the number one thing I was seeing though is that there's still some confusion between probation and parole we have to remember those two things are very very different probation is in lieu of prison people kept saying things like sent him back to prison or his parole officer is going to revoke that and I know a lot of times those are just uh, uh, typos but we have to remember especially when we move on in your careers when you move on to report writing semantics are very very important uh, everything that you say, everything that you write down is very important. So the difference between probation and parole is huge. Probation is run by the county and it's in lieu of or instead of jail uh, or prison. And parole is an early release from incarceration. So let's say you're, you, know, you get a 10 year sentence, you are up for parole in seven, uh, then you can be released under certain conditions. Now when you get into the conditions, then probation and parole are very similar when you get into the conditions. But um, from the actual standpoint of what they are at their core, probation and parole very different, especially because probation is from the county and parole is from the state. Uh, federal government still has parole officers, but they no longer have parole, so they're kind of weeding out uh, the rest of the people who are on parole, and then we'll see what happens at that point. So let's get right to it. Uh, let's talk about Smith. I think that you guys did a great job debating this. Uh, once again, I was very, very grateful to see that you guys concentrated on the issue. You didn't debate each other. Nobody said that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Uh, there was some heated debate, and I always encourage that. You guys came up with some really great points. Uh, one of the key points, I think, that a lot of you guys glommed onto was that uh, drug use in and of itself is often a symptom of something much greater, something much deeper. And so if we look at someone like Smith, who's not a violent offender, yes, he, he's violating the law, and by no way, shape, or form are we making excuses for that, but we're looking at what's the core, what's the cause, why does he continue in this deviant behavior? And the larceny seemed to be a way to feed the habit, seemed to be a way to feed the drug use, uh, or as a direct result, direct link to that drug use. So if you could eliminate the drug use, you could thereby subsequently eliminate the larceny or the deviant behavior. So we had eight months of Smith doing very well, and then a rapid decline uh, following that. Um, one of the, uh, another one of the key elements uh, that you guys glommed onto, and I was very proud of you guys for this, is very, very important. Why was he allowed for so long to engage in this deviant behavior? Why was he allowed to be non-compliant for so long? Now we have to understand that probation officers normally carry a caseload of 100 plus, which is just mind-boggling to try to touch base every month with over a hundred people but that's the reality and so knowing that and knowing that Smith was out of compliance and when we look at the vignette it did definitely tell us uh, the scenario did tell us that the probation officer was aware that Smith was out of compliance uh, and after the dirty UA the year analysis um, I, I think it probably might have been time to take action then 
At any rate, uh, you guys identified that, that there was some, some fault on the part of probation officer and that had to be questioned as well. So moving forward, a lot of you guys agreed that, uh, or came up with the idea that the best option would be to uh, continue probation, but with much stricter rules and regulations. Uh, some people talked about um, a, an inpatient facility for the drug use. I think that would be a great idea as well. Uh, and everybody, I think, agreed on one aspect, and that is this is the last shot for Smith. This is it. Whatever we decide on, if he violates that probation, those rules, then he's going to have to serve his sentence because, as you guys said, we want to help. We, we see that it's potential for Smith to return to uh, society as a productive member of the community, uh, but if he simply refuses to do that, we can't make him. Um, People in, in, in rehabilitation, they have to want to be part of that rehabilitation. And if they're simply unwilling, there's nothing we can do to make them do that. So excellent job on that. Uh, you guys had, uh, like I said, some great ideas. I think that attacking the drug use in this situation would be the most effective in order to reduce it, uh, reduce the recidiv uh, recidivism that we're seeing from Smith. I also want to uh, go on record here and let you guys know that there really was no wrong answer to that. Uh, for those of you that said, you know what, revoke his probation and send him to prison for that 18-month sentence, that's not necessarily the wrong answer. Uh, that may very well be what he needs. I personally don't think that that's the right answer, only because the availability of drugs in prison um, and uh, uh, the fact that that punitive approach is maybe not so much what he needs. It seems like more of a mental health approach, uh, some cognitive behavioral therapy to try to replace the drug use with some socially acceptable coping skills. But again, no. if there was a clear, bright line rule, then it wouldn't be an ethical dilemma, right? So great job on that. Last thing I want to cover is full credit for the discussion questions. I'm still seeing people only do their discussion question and then saying, hey, I'm done. We're doing their discussion question and responding to one person and then saying that they're done. And you're only getting partial credit. In order to get full credit, you need to do your discussion response, then you need to search out two totally separate people. So let's say you're looking and you see uh, Bob and you respond to Bob. Bob has this great post and you say, hey, I really like what you did, uh, and you highlight some of his points where you agree and maybe ask a clarifying question. That's one response. So this here is going to be five points. This is going to be 2.5 points. Then you look and you see Sally. And Sally has just uh, a response that you don't agree with at all. Her response is way off base, right? So you respond to her saying, Sally, I don't think you understand what's going on here. Here's a couple of things that I saw in the reading. Of course, backing it with, with uh, uh, you know, the textbook and, and other sources if you want. That's another 2.5 points for a total of your 10 points. I can't give you full credit if you're not doing that. So moving forward as we go into week three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, make sure that you are completing the uh, entire discussion response so that we can make sure you're getting full credit. Other than that, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, uh, I'm always available by either phone or email. I gave you guys uh, all the numbers. I'll, I'll put them on this video as well. Uh, I appreciate your feedback. I've gotten some feedback on the first video saying they're very helpful, so let me know. Um, other than that, I'll check in on you guys next week.